how auspicious on Gaur Purnima to come to a temple again. I don't know about all of you, but I haven't been to a temple, in a temple program, too many months. Gaur Purnima. Fantastic, fantastic. The topic that I've been asked to speak about, same topic, because it's very broad and general, as at the Potomac Temple earlier today, the Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his loving relationships with his devotees. So I hope you're ready for two months worth of a Sunday feast lecture because it's a big topic. I thought to speak here about Rupa Goswami and of course just some piece of the loving relationship between Lord Chaitanya and Rupa Goswami because as we know he was um, next in line in disciplic succession following Chaitanya Mahaprabhu of course Sanatana Goswami and Rupa Goswami but even particularly Rupa Goswami And the feature of um, the relationship, the loving relationship between Rupa Goswami and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, or Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Rupa Goswami, was Lord Chaitanya's empowerment. Here's a little Prabhupada story on Gaur Purnima. I heard this directly from Yasamati Nandan Prabhu. Many of you know Yasamati Yaso from Ahmedabad. Uh, he one time, Yaso was one, Yasamati Nandan Prabhu was one time visiting uh, Madhav Maharaja's Mat, Gaudiya Mat, the one that's the closest Mat to our ISKCON property. And um, the discussion somehow got around to Prabhupada's being um, able to distribute Krishna consciousness so effectively in such a short time, as, as we all know. And Madhav Maharaj made a remark that Yasamati Nandan took exception to. And the remark was something along the lines of, your Swamiji was able to do this because he was a good businessman. He knew how to expand businesses, so he was really good at spreading Krishna consciousness. And Yasu Nandan told me, he, you know, knowing the scripture, immediately took exception and said, you know the scripture, how can you say that in order to spread Krishna consciousness, Krishna Shakti Vina Nahi Tara Prabhartana, without directly being empowered by Krishna to do so, you can't even induce someone to chant the holy name with to speak of spread Krishna consciousness around the world in such an incredible fashion. And I don't know how the discussion ended, but it wasn't on a happy note. And then Yasamati Nandan went straight to Prabhupada's quarters and shared with him what the discussion was and how he responded. And Prabhupada was enraged. And from that point on, from I understood from Yasho, Prabhupada became very firm about not the ISKCON devotees, not going outside to the other Gaudiamat centers because they're envious, etc. without going into details. But the main point of bringing this up is what, what, what made Prabhupada successful? You can say many things. He was determined and he ultimately he was empowered. Krishna Shakti. Directly by Krishna, of course, through disciplic succession and his great unbending faith in the order of his spiritual master and his faith in the holy name and, and so forth and so on. 
So Rupa Goswami received that same. Now, it's something I learned about, um, about a year ago. I'll share with you. Uh, one of our congregation members somewhere had been trained since her childhood in Bharatanatyam dancing. And she had this question from the Bharatanatyam dance training that she had that Rupa Goswami speaks of 12 rasas and the training that she received was there eight. So how did it go from eight to 12 was her question. So the, with some research, because I didn't know that fact, Bharata Muni, sometime around the turn of the century, um, wrote scripture, what is, what's accepted as authoritative scripture on not only dance, but specifically the signs of rasa. You can go on, you know, Wikipedia or online Google and check out Bharata Muni. Eight principal rasas. And that stood as authoritative understanding of rasa until Rupa Goswami came along. There were little permutations and combinations, but largely it stood. And Rupa Goswami's contribution went beyond eight. Uh, there's some details which I, there's not necessary to go into, you know, how did, what, what, which was different between the eight and the 12. But his, his, his principle was five primary, seven secondary rasas. And that's where it went, eight went to 12. And uh, his, his whole teaching was, you can say his realization or his teaching was the, the whole of the spiritual world is an ocean of bhakti rasa. The spiritual world is but an ocean of bhakti rasa. And so bhakti rasamrita sindhu is his book and he details the, the, the primary and secondary rasas within that book, among so many other things. And it follows a lot of what Bharata Muni says, and when you read carefully, I know many of you like to read carefully, um, the teachings that came from Rupa Goswami, it, there's reference, for example, there's reference when he's being requested by Ramananda Roy, who was expert in drama, to, a, to, to ask Rupa Goswami to explain this and that and that and the other, and I don't know all the Sanskrit terminologies, for different parts of drama, Rupa Goswami knew. And in pra pra Prabhupada's purport, there's reference to this and that and the other scriptural sources Rupa Goswami was vastly learned. Nana Shastra Vichara Naika Nipino said Dharma Samustapako. But for the purpose, not just of uh, stimulating emotion, because the science of drama is meant for that purpose, and ultimately meant for the purpose of stimulating feelings of love for Krishna. Without going into further detail, music, architecture, anything cultural has a purpose. The, the whole of the Vedas has a purpose. What's the purpose? To connect with the personality of Godhead. So those feelings to be stimulated through drama, like natakam. I'm going to make reference to the writing of Kavi Karnapur, Chaitanya Chandradaya Natakam. Natakam means drama. In that drama, Kavi Karnapur describes the meeting of Lord Chaitanya and Rupa Goswami. I'm going to make reference to it. So it, three times in Chaitanya Charitamrita, there is explicit reference to the relationship of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Rupa Goswami and how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu saw within Rupa Goswami, 
here is a fit candidate for empowerment. And he empowered him. Well, here, I'm going to read some of the verses. He entered into the heart of Rupa Goswami. He empowered Rupa Goswami to understand everything. He not only explained everything, he empowered him to understand, realize fully, and write literature on all those things. Including, including Ramananda Roy's talks. Later, Ramananda Roy is going to say everything that's within his drama. He's writing about everything that you made this mouth speak that I didn't even understand and never even thought of before, but it came out of my mouth because you were like a puppeteer and I was the puppet. You're having me speak. And it's all in his writing. So I've underst I can understand. You have empowered him. And Lord Chaitanya confirmed, yes, I empowered him. So let's go to the first, this is a, the topic is the re loving relationship between Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his devotees. Of course, Rupa Goswami is an eternal associate. He's Sri Rupa Manjari. And we hear, we're going to hear also about Sarup Damadar. Sarup Damadar. Um, examined Rupa Goswami's capacity and concluded you must have empowered him and Mahaprabhu said yes I did. So who's Sarup Damadar? If Rupa Goswami is Sri Rupa Goswami, Sri Rupa Manjari in Krishna Leela who is Sarup Damadar? Lalita. Lalita. In Chaitanya Charitamrita Prabhupada writes Rupa um, Sarup Damodar is Lalita Devi. Then he says that in the authoritative literature, Gauragona Desh Dipika, there Kavi Karnapur says he is Vishaka. And then the next sentence Prabhupada says, so we can understand he is a direct expansion of Radharani <laughs> to enhance Lord Chaitanya's pastimes. That is, the mood of Radha experiencing the love that she has for Krishna. That was Sarup Damodar. And all of Lord Chaitanya's associates, including Rupa Goswami, so that there's the pastime of their meeting, but let us bear in mind behind the, their meeting is there's an eternal relationship. So they, they first met when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was making his visit to Vrindavan. He just took a little detour and went to where Rupa and Sanatan were engaged in the government service of Nawab Hussein Shah. And they met for the first time. After they met, Sanatan Goswami advised Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, imagine advising Chaitanya Mahaprabhu something, uh, best to not go to Vrindavan with such a big crowd, it's not fitting better to go alone or with one person. So he went back to Puri and went to Vrindavan. The meanwhile, Rupa and his brother Anupam escaped government service. Sanatan Goswami was put in prison by Nawab Hussein Shah. So Rupa and uh, Anupam, the two brothers, met Chaitanya Mahaprabhu at Prayag. When they met him, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu immediately recognized them because he had already given them the name, Rupa and Sanatan. Anupam didn't have such a name. But so Rupa and Sanatan are, are meeting Lord Chaitanya now for the second time. And our celebrated verse, Namo Mahavadanyaya, Krishna Prema Pradayate, Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya, Namane Gora Trishay Namaha, was spoken at that time. Now they're both scholarly, reciting many, many verses. That particular verse is quoted in Chaitanya Charitamrita. And Lord Chaitanya immediately recognized them and immediately embraced both of them. How would you like to be embraced by Lord Chaitanya? Whether it's Gaur Purnim or any day of the year. 
they were embraced and they felt blessed and ecstatic love. I'm going to read some verses. This is Madhya 19, verse 111. Due to great crowds at Prayag, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went to a place called the Shashvamedagat. It was there that the Lord instructed Sri Rupa Goswami and empowered him, and empowered him, and empowered him in the philosophy of devotional service. There the verse Krishna Shakti Vina Nahe Tarabhavatana is mentioned in the purport. He empowered Rupa Goswami. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught Rupa Goswami the ultimate limit of the truth about Lord Krishna, the truth about devotional service, and the truth about transcendental mellows, culminating in conjugal love between Radha and Krishna. Finally, he told Rupa Goswami about the ultimate conclusions of Srimad Bhagavatam. Now this took place in the course of 10 days, a pretty intense seminar. Lord Chaitanya and you having discussions on the ultimate truths about Krishna and Srimad Bhagavatam and the highest of all rasas. Here again, specifically, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught Rupa Goswami all the conclusions he had heard from Ramananda Roy and duly empowered him so that he could understand them. And then later he empowers him to write them. By entering the heart of Rupa Goswami, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu empowered him to ascertain properly the conclusions of all truths. He made him an experienced devotee whose decisions correctly agree with the verdict of disciplic succession. Once again, this is verse, not commentary. Thus, Srila Rupa Goswami was personally empowered by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Then Krishna Das Kaviraj, being the Kaviraj, goes to Kavi Karnapur's Nataka, Sri Chaitanya Chandrodaya, same as Chandrodaya Mandir, Chandrodaya Nataka, and he quotes verbatim three verses the meeting of Rupa Goswami and Sanatana and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. From the very beginning, Srila Rupa Goswami was deeply attracted by the transitive qualities of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. The topic is the loving relationship. So here, he was attracted to the qualities of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. We're going to hear Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was attracted by the qualities of Rupa Goswami. Thus, he, Rupa, was permanently relieved from family life. Srila Rupa Goswami and his younger brother, Vallabha, were blessed by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. When they met, Mahaprabhu embraced them. He placed his feet on their head. Top that one, huh? That happened to Advaita Acharya also. I mean, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu didn't make a business of putting his feet on people's head. But when special benediction was there, not only touched their feet, because he didn't let people touch his feet or wash his feet, he placed his foot on their head. Although the Lord was transcendentally situated in his transcendental eternal form, at Payag he told Rupa Goswami about transcendental ecstatic love of Krishna. The Lord then embraced him very fondly and bestowed all his mercy upon him. How much is all of Lord Chaitanya's mercy? He's Mahavadanyaya. It's circuit overload, right? <laughs> Who can bear all of Lord Chaitanya's mercy? He bestowed it upon Rupa Goswami because he was a fit recipient. 
and he carried it for the rest of his life. That was one verse out of three from Kali Karnapur. Next. Indeed, Srila Rupa Goswami, whose dear friend was Sarup Damodar, right, Lalita, and Rupa Manjari, was the exact replica of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, that's Rupa. And he was very, very dear to the Lord, being the embodiment of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's ecstatic love. Rupa Goswami was naturally very beautiful. He was very, he very carefully followed the principles enunciated by the Lord. And he was a competent person to explain properly the pastimes of Lord Krishna. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu expanded his mercy to Srila Rupa Goswami just so he could render service by writing transcendental literatures. I missed one. The, the first line was, in the course of time, the transcendental news of Krishna's pastimes in Vrindavan was almost lost. To enunciate implicit, explicitly those transcendental pastimes, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu empowered Srila Rupa Goswami and Sanatana Goswami with the nectar of his mercy to carry out this work in Vrindavan. So uh, the main message here is Lord Chaitanya and his relationship was they had mutual affection, appreciation of one another's qualities, and Lord Chaitanya empowered him. He selectively empowered him, and he carried it. So the next, that was from Madhya Lila, chapter 19. We're going to jump to Antya Lila, chapter 1. Antya Lila is kind of the introduction to the Shesha Lila, the final pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Krishna Das Kaviraj is describing the scene in Puri where Lord Chaitanya wanted Rupa Goswami to recite. He said, I've heard you're, con you're composing a drama. He already knew that because he told them make it two instead of just one. I'd like to hear it. I'm going to bring all the devotees tomorrow. Be prepared. So the next day, the devotees came, all the elder Vaishnavas, and they wanted Rupa Goswami to sit in their midst. He froze. He sat at a distance. I'm contaminated. I'm a lowly person. He said the same thing to Balaba, Bhaka, and Prayag because Balabhata was living nearby at that time. And Balabhata came, saw the two brothers, and started to approach them. And they backed off and said, don't come near us. We're contaminated. We're low-born. We're a low-class people. You're an aristocratic person. Please don't contaminate yourself. And Balabha said, how is this? They're, they're constantly chanting the holy name. They're the most exalted personalities. And Lord Chaitanya said something that gave Balaba the hint. It's just their mood of humility. So he let them stay in that position of humility. So that was, is it not? It is. Yes, it is. It's a natural quality for those who are very, very advanced. They're naturally very humble, inside and outside. Now, sometimes Rupa Goswami had to do things that were strong, but he would do so, do so out of humility, not out of something else, pride or ego. For the service of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he would sometimes be strong, including in his writing. And so he wouldn't sit in the midst of all the devotees. So there's a really long section, really long section where um, rasa found in Vidagta Madhava and Lita Madhava is enumerated. The question would be asked, uh, apparently, uh, Krishna Das Kaviraj also knew the science of drama. 
because he asked very, very specific questions. There was no recording, it's just passed on. How was it passed on? By Raghunath Das. How was it passed on from Raghunath Das from Srub Damodar? No recording devices, they just Srub Damodar understood everything and had that kind of capacity. And so Raghunath Das is tailing Krishna Das, and Krishna Das knew the science of drama. And so pages and pages and pages and pages and pages. And at the end of hearing everything, you know that famous line, this is not poetry, this is nectar, showers of nectar. And then Ramananda Roy says, for him to compose literature like this, I can only conclude that he received your mercy, because otherwise it's not possible. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, in this additional place, confirms, yes, I met Rupa Goswami at Prayag. He attracted and satisfied me because of his qualities. So what qualities? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu bestowed his special favor upon Rupa Goswami because Rupa Goswami wanted to serve the Lord to his best ability. That's a good quality, isn't it? Not just Krishna should be pleased, but always and consistently to the best of one's ability, and that grows and gr ability grows when you do like that. It becomes empowered by spiritual potency. Such is the reciprocation between the devotee and the Lord in the discharge of devotional duties. That's our topic for this evening. The loving relationship, and loving relationship is based upon not birth or something, 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 not something material. Not because Prabhupada was a good businessman, he was able to spread Krishna consciousness. That's offensive. Because he had unflinching determination to carry out the order of his spiritual master and fulfill the mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu thereby. With all faith in the instruction and the holy name and carrying forward the message untiringly. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, next, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu requested all his personal associates to bless Rupa Goswami so that he might continuously describe the pastimes of Vrindavan, which are full of emotional love of Godhead. And then he says to Ramananda Roy, Sanatana Goswami is just like him. They're both unparalleled Vaishnavas. I empowered both of these devotees to go to Vrindavan to expand the literature of bhakti. So to expand the literature of bhakti takes empowerment, but it takes understanding and realization of the message. He, he was carrying the fullness of Lord Chaitanya's mercy. He had um, big capacity. He had the biggest circuit breaker you you ever can imagine. <laughs> Lord Chaitanya made it possible. And uh, finally, and there's there's more, but because of time, we're just going to go on to another place where Lord Chaitanya confirms that he directly gave his full mercy to Rupa Goswami. The next in disciplic succession by being empowered amongst the so many, the, the exaltedness of Lord Chaitanya's associates and the intimacy of love of those associates. They're transcendental associates. It's just amazing and a whole host of amazing personalities. And Rupa Goswami is foremost amongst them. So, the other reference is in um, Madhya Leela, chapter one, <clears throat> where Lord Chaitanya is in Puri and he's before the deity of Lord Jagannath and he's dancing in the midst of Kirtan and reciting over and over again a, a verse that's like a love song. 
you know, she loves him, whoa, 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 you know, one of those that you might hear in a popular song somewhere. And they had, must have had songs like that in those days. But no one could understand. Well, except Srup Dhammadar could understand. And one time, Rupa Goswami was there and he heard and he understood. So he composed this verse. I'm just going to read the translation. You've heard it many times, I'm sure. This is Radha pining for Krishna's association. Please come back to Vrindavan. Like the meeting in Kurukshetra. That very personality who stole away my heart during my youth is now again my master. These are the same moonlight, moonlit nights of the month of Chaitra. The same fragrance of Malati flowers is there, and the same sweet breezes are blowing from the Kandamba forest. In our intimate relationship, I am also the same lover, yet still my mind is not happy here. I am eager to go back to that place on the bank of the Reva under the Vitasi tree. That is my desire. Just hearing Lord Chaitanya express his mood of love, Rupa Goswami could understand, composed this verse on a leaf and stuck it on his roof and went to take his midday bath. Lord Chaitanya came to see him. When he was gone, he saw, he was gone, but he saw the leaf, he read the leaf and was very surprised. He said, no one understands the purport of my verse. How could you understand my intention? Saying this, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu bestowed various benedictions upon Rupa Goswami and taking the verse, he later showed it to Sarup Damodar. And then the verse appears again. Having shown the verse to Sarup Damodar with great wonder, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu asked him, how Rupa Goswami could understand the intentions of his mind. Srila Sarup Damodar Goswami replied to Lord Chaitanya, if Rupa Goswami can understand your mind and intentions, he must have your Lordship's special benediction. It's deductive logic, right? And he hit the target. The Lord confirmed. I was so pleased with Rupa Goswami that I embraced him and bestowed upon him all necessary potencies for preaching the bhakti cult. I accept Rupa Goswami as quite fit to understand the confidential mellows of devotional service, and I recommend that you explain devotional service to him further. So we can be sure Srup Damodar took up that assignment. Lalita taught Rupa Manjari how to do her service, how to understand the mellows of love between Radha and Krishna. Only in this world, in our modern times, in Kali Yuga, it's, it's out of sight. I, I'm, uh, I want to just make one other statement here. In, in the purport, in, in, in this connection of Rupa Goswami understanding, um, Prabhupada humbly writes, we had the opportunity, I means he, Prabhupada had the opportunity to receive a similar blessing from Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami when we, Prabhupada, presented an essay at his birthday ceremony. He was so pleased with that essay that he used to call some of his confidential devotees and show it to them. How could we have understood the intentions of Srila Prabhupada Question mark. That's the per that's the purport. Prabhupada is acknowledging, in a humble way, that he was also empowered. But what about us? We're we're little people. We're kind of lost in the fog of trying to become good sadhakas and uh, good followers of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So along with becoming good followers of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and better followers and using Prabhupada's word, strive for perfection, there's a very important ingredient and that's descending mercy. 
because without this is a Gaudiya Vaishnava teaching, the group which Rupa Goswami exemplifies. We should be very eager for mercy. We should strive to our capacity, to our best capacity, like Rupa Goswami, Lord Chaitanya said was Rupa Goswami's uh, life motto, attracted to Lord Chaitanya's qualities and striving his best to please him, but very much dependent upon mercy. And uh, in a com mood of complete humility, it's a great combination. It's a spiritual combination and that's a lesson we can learn from Rupa Goswami and when seeing such of qualities in Rupa Goswami, blessings from Lord Chaitanya. So this is Gaur Purnima and we're remembering the very special relationships of Lord Chaitanya with his associates, at least this evening, that's the topic. And uh, can't get much better than Lord Chaitanya's loving relationship with Rupa Goswami and investing him with all potencies to understand, realize fully, and communicate it to others. That's Lord Chaitanya's Sankirtan mission. Rupa Goswami is our leader. We're followers. So I had planned to end in time to allow for some discussion because discussion on a topic like this could be very nice. And I don't know if there's a, this is a discussion group or a shy group. Let's see. If there's any comments or questions or sharing, something you'd like to express. Thank you so much for narrating this pastime uh, that highlighted for me the spiritual qualities like humility, for example, are very pleasing to Lord Chaitanya. And uh, Lord Chaitanya bestowed his mercy on Rupa Goswami to further propagate his message for all of us. So in the, my appreciation is going for Lord Chaitanya that uh, he, through his associates, he made arrangement or organization for propagating for all of our benefit to, to take up bhakti properly. That's a comment for us. Yes. Okay. One question was that, uh, as, as you mentioned, as sadhakas, uh, how, how can we strive towards... How can we strive? To please Lord Chaitanya and to receive his mercy. How can we strive? I'm tempted to say what Prabhupada said as a response to the question, Swamiji, how can we become sincere? And Prabhupada's reply is, by being sincere. Everyone knows what is sincerity, but he continued. And so we be sincere and to strive to be sincere, we be sincere. How do we cultivate sincerity by being sincere? We, 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 how do we strive as we strive? You, there's, a, there's a goal. There's an acknowledgement of where I am and I'm not where the goal is, but I want to reach the goal. And so I take steps, doable steps towards the goal. And then you consider from scripture and from proper guidance, what are some doable steps? And then you commit to those doable steps and you stay with it. That's striving, and that's how we do it. We got to ask for mercy, though. We can't just "I'm going to do it." This, that's the, that's the other element. Strive with dependence upon mercy. Yeah. Anybody else in this august assembly? silent, happy devotees, I guess. If 
there's no discussion, we can end and have kirtan and wait for the next activity. Srila Prabhupada ki. So much, Maharaj. It was so wonderful, such deep, uh, so much a loving relationship. And I think, just feel that this is how we should cultivate loving relationship among each other. So, Lord Chaitanya, be merciful upon you, for us, so for, upon all of us. So, I think now it's time for many of you who've been waiting. Uh, we're going to have a Vishek program now. A Vishek ceremony is going to start. It's going to be a beautiful Vishek ceremony. So, please uh, be seated where you are, and then the Brahmas can do. Then all the sponsor will do afterwards. For Thank you so much. And I know many have been sitting here, and there are many 